Hey everybody, welcome to our first video solution from Quiz 12 here, Spring 2023, Math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem, we are uh, jumping back to our standard on divisibility results for polynomial rings over fields, and we're given two polynomials here, F and G, and we're viewing them as polynomials over the rational numbers. So uh, our goal in both problems is going to be to compute a greatest common divisor of these two polynomials, and we're going to do it in two different ways. So in the first one, we're going to use the Euclidean algorithm, and the second one will factor essentially using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Okay, so uh, let's try the Euclidean algorithm on this. So the Euclidean algorithm means, okay, I'm gonna use the division algorithm multiple times, and let's see. So I should be able to write my function, and I'm gonna start with my f because that's the higher degree polynomial, and I should be able to write f as q times g plus some r, where the degree of r is less than the degree of g, which in this case is equal to two. Okay, so I'm just going to copy my f, x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1 equals, okay, well, I'm going to have my q, and then I have my g, which is x squared plus 3x plus 2, and then there can be some remainder. All right, well, what I do in the first bit is I'm going to basically say, what, do, what can I multiply my g by to get as close to f as possible? So, for example, I know I need to get x cubed, but I have x squared. So what if I multiplied by x? So x times x squared will give me the x cubed, so this is taken care of. Okay, but putting the x here, it's also going to multiply by 3x, which will give me 3x squared. And I don't want 3x squared. I want just 1x squared. So I could get rid of 2 here, and now I would have minus 2x squared, plus the 3x squared. Oh, 3x squared minus 2x squared is 1x squared. Okay, that's exactly what I needed. But I now also have x times 2, as well as minus 2 times 3x. Ah, so x times 2 is 2x, minus 2 times 3x is minus 6x. That gives me, uh, let's see, minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4. So I have minus 4x, but I want minus 1x. And you'll notice here, there's there's really nothing left for me to add to do that uh, to this factor. So I'm going to have to actually include that in the remainder. So I have negative 4x. I want negative 1x. So I'm going to add 3x to compensate. All right. I also have minus 2 times positive 2. That's minus 4. And I only want minus 1. So I'm going to have to add another 3 again to compensate. All right, so this is sort of the uh, the one-line version of essentially doing polynomial division. If if this is too fast, right, We you really could, whoops, you really could come over here and say, okay, let me do x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1, and I'll divide by x squared plus 3x plus 2, and we would go through all the usual machinations, right? I multiply x by x squared to get x cubed, and then uh, x by 3x gives me 3x squared, x by 2 gives me 2x, then I subtract, and I get x squared minus 3x is negative 2x squared, negative x minus 2x is minus 3x, then we bring down a minus 1, hey, I multiply x squared by minus 2 to get negative 2x squared, Minus 2 gives me, okay, there's my negative 2x squared. Minus 2 by 3x is minus 6x. Minus 2 by minus by plus 2 is minus uh, 4. And then we subtract. And when we subtract, okay, I get 0. Negative 3x minus minus is plus 6x, which is 3x. Negative 1 minus minus 4 is plus 3. Okay, and so we see we get x minus 2 as our quotient and 3x plus 3 as our remainder. Okay, so same thing. Um, it's also kind of nice to note 3 times x plus 3 is the same as 3 times the quantity x plus 1. 
Um, we'll see in a second why that's going to be a little bit useful. Now, if we want to continue on in the Euclidean algorithm, we have to shift the original divisor to become the dividend. The remainder would become the new divisor. And then we get this set up. Okay. Now, I did this little factorizing, right? 3 times x plus 1. So instead of dividing 3x plus 3, which is going to give us a bunch of uh, denominators, right? We're going to get a bunch of fractions. I'm just going to divide by x plus 1. And then we can, at the end, right, compensate for this, this 3. And, and this is where it's good to just stop and think for a little second. Um, x squared plus 3x plus 2. I actually can factor that, right? Like this becomes x plus 1 times x plus 2. Or let me write it the other way. x plus 2 times x plus 1. And then you might say, well, geez, I have here 3 times x plus 1. I just need to divide... <laughs> this polynomial by x plus 1, and I know that's just going to cancel this x plus 1. And so I would get x plus 2, except, well, i got to compensate for this 3, so I could just put a 1 third in the front. Now, of course, you could go and do this without knowing this factorization. Right? You could do long division again. right? You say, okay, I'm going to take x squared plus 3x plus 2, divide it by, well, you could even 3x plus 3 and feel really bad about life. And say, okay, this is going to be one third x. One third x by three x is going to give me x squared. One third x by three is going to give me x. I can subtract and I get two x. Drop down the two. Oh, what do I multiply? Oh my goodness. Well, let's see. If I multiply by a third and then by two, I'll get two. So two thirds. All right. So that gives me two x. And then hey, three times two thirds is also two. And I get no remainder. All right. And so I could factor out a third from this and think of this as a third times x plus 2, which you see is what we get on the left. Also notice, because it divided evenly, we get no remainder, which means we actually don't need this step, right? This is the superfluous division, like a divide step. And so the Euclidean algorithm tells us we can use the last non-zero remainder which we can either take here as 3 times x plus 3, or we could even ignore the 3 and just write x plus 1. Totally up to us. Greatest common divisors are only defined up to multiplication by a unit. So in any case, we get that the AGCD of f and g is equal to 3x plus 3, or if we like x plus 1, that's fine too. All right, so that's how we handle uh, finding the GCD using the Euclidean algorithm. All right, now what about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic? So for the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, we, re we rely on knowing we can take every polynomial over Qx and write it as a product of indecomposable, or if you like, irreducible polynomials. So we've already actually factored x squared plus 3x plus 2. So we know that factorization. What about the f? So this was x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. All right. So uh, we could use the rational root theorem here in order to try to find a linear factor. And so we notice the coefficients are 1 and negative 1. So we should really just try the roots 1 and negative 1. And sure enough, when I evaluate at 1, I get, let's see, 1 plus 1 minus 1 minus 1 is 0. So actually, I will get a factor of x minus 1. Okay, let me try negative 1. Uh, I get negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1, a negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. Okay, so so far I have negative 1 and positive 1, that's 0. Uh, how about here? Negative, negative 1 is positive 1, minus 1 is 0. Oh, so negative 1 is also a root, and so I know that I have another factor. All right, well, what's left over? Um, well, we could uh, uh, try guessing at it, uh, or we could say, well, okay, I know this is already x squared minus 1, so let me just divide. 
And I'll say, all right, what do I multiply x squared minus 1 by to get x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1? Now, I know I would have to multiply the x squared by an x to get x cubed. OK, but then I'm going to get also a minus 1 by x. That's negative x. Um, and well, that's actually OK, right? Like I'm supposed to have a negative x. Uh, but I'm also supposed to have an x squared. Ah, yeah. And here I don't have an x squared. So to get an x squared, I could put a plus 1. OK, so let's see. Does that mess anything up? I already have my x cubed. Uh, now I have x squared by 1 is x squared. I also have minus x, because minus 1 by x. Hey, I wanted that. And I have minus 1 by 1 is minus 1. Oh my goodness, I got everything. So in fact, ah, there's just two copies of x plus 1 squared. So if I wanted to write it in that more condensed form, I could do so. OK, so we have factorizations into indecomposable polynomials. Now, the greatest common divisor we can find by choosing each of these irreducible polynomials, or indecomposable, whichever you like, and taking the minimum exponent that occurs. So for example, all right, let's, you know, we'll set this up, g, c, d of f, and g. I'm going to take, well, let's see, we have 1, the x minus 1, 2, the x plus 1, 3, the x plus 2. So let's write all these down, x minus 1, x plus 1, x plus 2. And I want to know which is the smallest exponent I see. So for x minus 1, it occurs one time in f, right? And this was g up here. Uh, and it doesn't occur at all in g, which tells me that I should be using the smallest one, which is 0. How about x plus 1? It shows up twice in f and one time in g. So I use just the smallest one, which is one time. And then x plus 2, that shows up once for g and no times for f. So the smallest is no times. All right. Well, I can ignore all these things to the 0 power, and I'm simply left with x plus 1 to the 1, or I just write x plus 1. And there we go. The GCD is uh, x plus 1 or any uh, constant multiple of x plus 1. All right. There we go. We can find GCDs for polynomials. Beautiful. We'll see you next time, everybody.